The Razak Madib of that are you and the ghost of Alton Chihuahua that Najib must bury. Written by Christopher Fernandez. Malaysia Chronicle. The Razak Madib of that are you and the ghost of Alton Chihuahua that Najib must bury. Written by Christopher Fernandez. Malaysia Chronicle. Monday, the 2nd of July 2012. Abdul Razak Bajinder. A controversial figure in the death of Mongolian translator Alton Shuai Sharabu, was the chairman of the Kendo Club at St. John's Institution in 1978, while the vice chairman was none other than me. But Jindo was the most affable chap back in school those days. He was pleasant, courteous and gregarious. He had many friends as he was a likable person. There were none in school who could be said to be enemies with him. Upon leaving St. John's, we parted ways and he never crossed my mind. Until Aiken's encounter at the MPH Bansering Jail until all he brought us back in talk contact. By then he was a familiar personality among Malaysians as a television talk show host. During that brief encounter, he invited me to be a contributing editor with the publication he was about to start from scratch. The name of that publication was Asian Editor. This was mid-1997 and the gender had abuse in Esophis at Wisma generously in jail and Ampang. Kuala Lumpur which was frequented by me in the process of writing stories for them. Then, when the official launch of the magazine was held at a leading hotel in Fesity, it was none other than Najib Tun Razak, who was to officiate at the launching ceremony. Unfortunately, and for certain reasons, Najib did not show up. This was really the old boy network of St. John's at work as Najib himself is an old boy of St. John's, but much senior to both of us. Bajinda himself being two years my senior, but the show went on with Bajinda apologizing about the non appearance of Najib and the main issue of Asian editor was unveiled with Bajinda hailing the editorial prowess of the team. It was a magazine meant to be circulated and distributed around the Asian region. Unfortunately, while being a commendable effort, the magazine folded suddenly after a year and a half of publishing. No reasons given. But our staff working on the magazine were paid their dues before parting ways with Virginia. While the job at Asian editor, there was hardly anything amiss at the office. Virginia was as he always was, almost as if we were in school. He was his usual cheerful, confident self, though most of us felt he had very little business acumen especially with regards to publishing. It also looked as if he had very little real interest in the publication. Leaving day-to-day -day operations to us, imagine the way and manner in which we were shocked out of our wits to discover that a political analyst was to be charged with the murder of a Mongolian national and that it was none other than Abdul Razak Bajinder. In the initial furor surrounding his arrest and subsequent remand for a period of 22 months, we were all hopeful that this was some big foul up and that Bajinder will be spared the gallows. But the curious twists and turns during the trial left many of us who were following the proceedings very much puzzled and bewildered. And when eventually two policemen were charged with the murder of Alton Shuai, all of us were relieved on one hand for the killer, yet had more unanswered questions on our minds. Perhaps the most glaring and evident question was put forward by Mr. Karpal Singh, counsel for Shiribu Setev, who was holding a watching brief on the health of the family, what was their motive? This is precisely the question which is uppermost in most people's minds. Why were two policemen who did not know Alton Shuai from Adam to Apples? Why would they want to go to the extent to gag and bind her and blow her up with explosives? Why on earth? These were two men who were certainly not deranged and thereafter the whole mystery of the death of Alton Shuai began to shroud the nation of Malaysia with more and more questions and twists and turns. It went into an ever-ending saga, with witnesses appearing and disappearing and testimonies given turned into an almost opposite version and even as the tutorial declaration rescinded. Since the news broke of the brutal murder of Alton Shuai, Malaysians have been gripped by the wide-ranging implications that have been created by this iron Mongolian woman upon the hearts and minds of Malaysians, while Alton Chua was never much a part of the local scene. The others were implicated and linked to her murder and the corruption scandal surrounding Scorpion submarine procurement by the Malaysian government on the 10 persons in the country which have started to give Malaysians goosebumps and made sleepless nights. The death of Alton Chihuahua is beginning to start to get eerie and spooky for most Malaysians. It's as if it is said to haunt us, that this nation has been befallen a curse by her untimely and mysterious death. It is not only an issue that troubles the minds and hearts of Malaysians but is beginning to rise up to the forefront of the international community. The answers are there and it should be that the relevant authorities from various countries involved, Malaysia, 
France. Mongolia and even Interpol work together to bring closure once and for all for everyone's minds and heads to be put at ease. Comma, it is definitely a time for closure and also a time to bury the ghost of all Tinchuire and former Lazians to move on with their lives. Only a one sand for all settlement that appeases all parties with a vested interest in Hadith will bury the ghost of all Tinchuire forever. Prime Minister Najib Razak must take the lead in ensuring the truth comes out.